Colorado Rangers are the oldest law enforcement agency in the state of Colorado. They were originally established as the Jefferson Rangers when we became the Jefferson Territory, but when we actually became a state. That was back in 1859. In 1861, when we officially became the Colorado Territory, we became the Colorado Rangers. Uh, we were patterned after the Texas Rangers, and for the majority of our existence, we were the only law enforcement agency statewide. We remained in full effect up until approximately 1923, when as a uh, promise to labor unions and labor groups, we had a governor that decided to defund us. Four years later, another governor decided to go ahead and finish off the job and actually stopped doing everything completely and just basically shut down the Rangers as a whole. So the state was without law enforcement statewide for a period of from 1920, let's say 1927 to approximately 1935 when the Colorado Safety Patrol became, which later became the Colorado State Patrol, came to, into existence. About 1941, we had another governor that decided that the Rangers needed to come back into existence. They brought us back in, this time as a full volunteer group. So all of our rangers are volunteer officers. I'm actually one of the few rangers that doesn't have formal law enforcement or military experience. Uh, I'm an attorney by training. So uh, they, they kind of grabbed me pretty quickly when they saw a lawyer joining the group here. Uh, but I'm an expert in firearms and, uh, and the law, obviously, and other critical skills uh, for the rangers. And I'm also a... Uh, state of Colorado law enforcement firearms instructor as well as a pepper spray, law enforcement pepper spray instructor. I would say the vast majority of rangers have extensive prior law enforcement and military experience. Uh, as a group collectively we have about 550 years of combined military experience and almost 500 years of combined law enforcement experience among our rangers across the state and we've got uh, almost 200 sworn rangers. It's really remarkable. We've got everybody from former lieutenants in the Westminster Police Department to Colorado State Patrol officers to colonels in the military to military police officers, many military police officers. And these are like-minded individuals who have a volunteer spirit to them. And this is the best way that they know how to give back to the community is in a volunteer law enforcement position. Law enforcement is highly, highly supportive of the Rangers and, in fact, uh, highly supportive of our efforts recently to professionalize the organization to the same standards that they meet. Well, we're looking for very high-quality individuals. You don't have to have prior law enforcement and military experience, but you do have to have the capability to learn and high ethics, high morals, high values, high standards. And um, those qualities, I think, are pretty standard across any law enforcement position in the state. We we exceed or at a minimum meet those standards of other law enforcement agencies in the state. Many of the folks that are attracted to us are retired law enforcement that uh, are looking to give back not in a full-time capacity to their communities but uh, in the way that the Rangers can. And the nice thing about the Rangers is we offer a statewide capability. So if you're a reserve police officer for instance you're going to be patrolling a, generally a fairly small community. If you're a Colorado Mounted Ranger, you could be doing work in Durango, in La Plata, in Denver, uh, all across the state. It's fascinating work. It's everything from parades and other um, major community events to search and rescues. We've got horse mounted patrol units. We've got dog teams for search and rescue. Uh, it's a very, very large variety and exciting amount of work. I have a full-time career in addition to what is turning into a full-time responsibility with the Rangers, but it's worth every second. My experience is that one time we reach a point in life where we want to give something back to the community. And uh, I started looking around as to what my options were, and many different volunteer programs existed, and most of them were one day a month, two day a month, but they didn't seem to have any continuity between each event. So it was simply putting in your time, so to speak. And when I discovered the Rangers, uh, it seemed to click. It's more than just a volunteer opportunity. Uh, my feeling is that it develops a sense of fellowship. And that's why I am very, very active in the Rangers. It has really been a rewarding experience for me. My role currently is I am captain of Troop H, which is based here in the Adams County, Boulder County area, in the North Metro area. And we serve the counties of Boulder, Broomfield, Adams, 
Weld, and Larimer. And then, uh, so my role is primarily here in the local troop service area as captain of this troop. So for the last eight years, I have been a full-time professional firearms instructor and trainer, training both civilian and law enforcement students. Uh, the Rangers are very active in offering educational programs at no charge to the community. An example of that is the Refuse to be a Victim program, which is a national crime prevention and personal safety program that we offer to the community. It's a four-hour seminar at no cost. And we also offer the Community Emergency Response Teams training, which is a FEMA government program. And we have certified instructors, including myself, in both of those programs. So we do that as a community service as well. And I think what has impressed me most about the Rangers and the Rangers that I've come to know and meet both uh, in, in my tenure as a Ranger but also uh, prior to and after just in the community itself, many individuals have come up to us and say, who are the Rangers? And after a little bit of time, they come to a couple of meetings and all of a sudden, who knew, but now they're a Ranger. So there's a sort of a self-recruiting um, process. It, it, there's almost an attraction process, quality people, uh, right-minded in terms of what their intentions are, tend to attract other individuals who also want to serve their community. So we're usually quite successful in that regard without having to go out and seek new recruits, so to speak. Right. People hear about us and learn about us and then they want to be a part of it. Well, my first step would be to direct them to our website. It's a statewide website and if I may, I can give you the web address. It is simply Colorado, spelled out, Colorado, followed by the word Ranger, without an S, so coloradoranger.org or .org. And that'll give them a good starting point. It has general history about the Rangers, information about our various troops, and if they have an interest, there's an online contact system where they can initiate the process. They'll be referred to their closest troop, then a troop officer will contact them and schedule an opportunity for them to come as an invited guest. Uh, new applicants go through about a five-point program. Uh, when an applicant expresses an interest, they come first to a meeting such as this evening. And we get to know them, we meet them, they meet other applicants and other rangers. If they then are interested in proceeding, they fill out an application, which is a rather extensive application, a multi-page, and that is submitted. They are called into an applicant interview where their initial screening is just a, a verbal, informal kind of interview process to find out many of the questions that you've asked me this evening. Why would you like to be a ranger? What are your interests in serving the community? And then if they are successful during that applicant interview, then they are basically background checked. We do a thorough background check. And then they are essentially moved to applicant status. And at that point, they must complete a minimum of three rated callouts where they are interacting with the public, directly assigned to a sworn ranger who evaluates how well they present themselves and how they communicate and so forth. And then they also attend our meetings so that every ranger has an opportunity to get to know them and meet them. And then at that point, there's a number of other training courses that they must complete. They complete an applicant orientation program, which is an extensive evening session about the history of the rangers and our policies and procedures so that they're well versed in that. And then there's a final applicant review panel meeting where they basically um, are able to relate their experience of the applicant process and then we ask them some of the same questions but also some harder questions as to why you would like to be a ranger and what are your skill set and how you can contribute to the community. And then only then is the vote taken by all of the sworn rangers in the troop. So it has to be something that we're all comfortable with. And then they're invited to be uh, a sworn ranger.